Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be going over something that's a little more difficult, a little more advanced, and can be a little finicky, and that is creating intersections. If you're new to Civil 3D and creating roads, intersections are very tough, but I'm going to make this easy for you guys and show you guys what I have found to be the best way of making intersections that work almost every time. And what I mean by almost is you do have to kind of clean them up a little bit, um, adjust some things to get them perfect. So it's not just a one and done process, but I will show you guys the, the best way to create intersections in Civil 3D. So here we got a project. And as you can see, we already got roads, corridors along these roads. And there's already surfaces on them. You can tell by these lines. We can take a look at them and see that that is indeed a road surface. So we have something to connect to, no, but now we need something here. We need a corridor running along and the intersection. So I already got some assemblies here. So these are the assemblies we are going to use for, oops. These are the assemblies we are gonna use for uh, this project so here is the main road right here it's got curbs on both sides sidewalk on one side and this goes for the whole length of the road except for where there's intersections where we have this and the reason why this differs is because when you're taking an intersection or taking a left or right or whatever direction it may be you don't want to drive over the curb and sidewalk so we remove that from the next assembly so that isn't getting in the way. So then we have the curb return. So this is what your actual um, assembly for the actual intersection will look like. Um, you'll just have the curb if there is one on the side and then your road lane. And that is going to be how you're only going to need three assemblies to do this. So you can kind of just copy what I got here. And so the first step is to create the corridor for the main road. So we're going to go up to home, which we already are at, and then corridor. Steen lane, that's the name of the road. We're going to pick the alignment for Steen, which is right here. Profile, Steen finish grade and the assembly steam. So this is why it's very important to name all your things correctly so it's really easy to find when you end up having a big project and tons of things. So we'll click OK. We've got steam. And this is going to be kind of too, this is too much for um, the stationing. It's going to go a little far. But to keep this video simple and not have to adjust tons of things, we're just going to leave that be. And we're going to turn the frequency down to 10. This just makes the lines tighter more accurate. Um, it's just better for a more accurate road. But you don't want to go too too small, otherwise your computer will be bogged down processing all that extra information. So 10 is usually pretty good for a big road. So we'll go ahead and build that. So now we got a corridor that is in, that follows our alignment, which is great. But now as you can see, we got the curb in the way and we don't want that there. So to get rid of that curb, we need to put in that assembly that we had over there into this section. And how we do that is, is by selecting the corridor and go up to the split region. So we're gonna click that. You click once to activate it and then you'll get a red line. And we're gonna be a little safe and go out here, split it right there. After we split that, we gotta come down here and split it right now we'll go right right there i find going a little farther than you think is better because then it's really easy to drag the curb once you're done so now that we got two regions and we're good with that we're going to go up here to modify region and region properties Let's see if it and now we're just going to press right here and now this brings up all the properties for the road in this little section that we created. So now we're gonna go to Steen and we're gonna change this 
to sidewalk right, which is what I named the road because the sidewalk's only going to be on the right. So look at this area right here, and it's gone. So now we don't have to worry about that sidewalk and driving over it. So now that we have that, now we can get to the intersection. So how we're going to do this is the first thing we're going to do, click on the corridor and we're going to send, go to display order and send it to the back. This way we can see the alignments because we have to select that one little point that connects the two alignments so that the computer knows where to put the center of the intersection. So after we have that, we go up to the intersection tab, create intersection, we zoom in, and we got the green X, so we are good. And now it's just going to scene in 14th. That will be the name of our intersection. And these are all good. I'm fine with this. We want primary road crown maintained as opposed to all crowns maintained because um, that's just not how this intersection is going to be. Uh, make sure to pay attention to the plans and what kind of intersection and they call um, your plans are calling for. So then we're going to go next. It's important to know to make sure that it has the correct road as the top priority. Your main road is going to be the top priority. And in this case, its name is Steam. So then the first thing you want to check is offset parameters. What this is doing is this is making sure that your road offsets are correct. So for our primary road, it is 13 feet on each side. So that is good. And then for our secondary road, 10 feet is offset from center line. So we are good there. Now, last thing we're going to check is curb return. So let me move this so you can see this was our different quadrants. So I believe it's supposed to be 30 feet for this road. So you can, but you can change this to whatever your, the road calls for. I'm going to go with 30 feet and OK. So we're all good there. Don't have to mess with anything else. And now this is very important. So for the method I am showing you, we don't want this checked. What this does is this automatically creates your whole intersection with assemblies you input into here. Now, this has never worked for me, and it has caused, if you want to, you can try this, but it just, it, it, it causes a lot of extra work because it's never perfect, and you have to go in and change everything anyway. People who do this all the time who maybe have, like, the same curb returns and everything just totally set up can do this piece of cake. But if you're constantly getting different jobs and doing things that are different, it's kind of just a pain. So I'm going to show you guys how I do it. And we're going to unclick that and press click create intersection. So we got that. And we got all this junk here. So we're just going to delete all that. Um, we don't need that much many labels. But you don't want to delete this blue circle. That holds all the information for the intersection. So you don't want to delete that. That'll just get rid of the whole thing. So now that we have this, as you can see, it's created two lines to be this parameter and this line as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a baseline, two baselines to this corridor. So we're going to go add baseline. And we are going to go to Steen and 14th Northwest Quadrant. As you can see here, that will be this quadrant, which is right here. So we're going to add that as a baseline. Yep. And then we're going to go add the other side, which will be the Southwest. is perfect and now that we have that we're gonna go to corridor properties and then to parameters so now we have these are our two new baselines and you can see them highlight red right there so there's the first baseline and there is our second baseline so now that we have these we got to add an assembly to it so we're gonna go over to assembly right click and add region 
and what we're going to do is I should have a curb return yep curb return and we're gonna add that to both so we are good there and now I'll just press this little plus and we're gonna go down to frequency we do not want frequency to be that high since it's such a small area area um, I usually go with two feet I find that gets it really good so we're just gonna put two we're gonna change the frequency to both of these for two so we don't forget 25 will be really boxy and it won't look it at all so there we go now they're both two feet and here's where the important part tar the targets so we want to set the target surface to existing grade if I have it on here I haven't named a sur surface one, I think. Nope, existing grade, here we go. So we want it to be to existing grade for your target surface. And then we want to put a width target. And this is where things can get a little bit confusing. So we're gonna set the targets for the intersection. That's for that middle road, because it's only gonna be 13 feet, but you don't want a big hole in the middle of your intersection and that can happen sometimes if you do this improperly so we're gonna to make it easy we go over to and actually to make this even easier what you want to do is you want to select select it so you can see where you're working which is right here so now we got to go back here to target and unfortunately it makes you put this all in again well I only had that so now we're gonna go here and we're gonna select them so there's two targets we want we want this to come all the way to the center alignment. So we're going to add that as a base line. And then we don't want the road to go all the way to the center because we already have road here. We want it to stop at this white line. So we'll add that too. Now that we have that, we'll add it. And press add and we got two. So we are good. There we got those two. And now we're going to go to outside elevation target and we're going to do pretty much the same thing except so we're going to go to we're going to go pick alignment so we want this and that should be and then we're going to want No, we don't want that. I'm sorry. We want this one. So you want this, and we're going to remove that last one. So we want the 2% because that's going to be following, the intersection is going to be following this and this. So then we're going to add the last one, which is this alignment. And that is layout 2 in this case. And OK. So now we got the targets set up for that road. That side of the road and now we're going to go to the other side do the same thing we're going to add existing grade go to width and just do the same thing over again we want here and here right here bam now we're set there now we're just going to press apply and there will be th some things we need to adjust but we'll take care of that when that happens so there we go we got an intersection so as you can see the lines stop where they should along and it follows the path that it should so we are all good there now we can use these little triangles to drag the curb where it should be so we're gonna pull this back and just match it right here and then pull this forward and you can just kinda mess with that to get it back to where it should be um, I won't go too much into that right now it's just a little 
So it's got to go off what the plans want. So right here, we'll just drag this back to make it look nice to match here. And we'll click on this one and it lines up perfectly. So we got an intersection. So now what we want to do is we want to make this a little better. So as you can see right here, we got this, we got some lines that could be added because right now we got a little hole right here. So what we can do is, is we can go over to add a section and then you click up here and you got another red line and then you just want to zoom in and just press and add some lines and then we press enter bam now it's nice and nice and tight and then we want to do the same thing for the other side just to make you know you always want it to be as good as you possibly can get all right that looks good so now that we got that there's only one more thing to do we got to create a surface off this and that is a very easy thing to do. We're just going to go to Quarter Properties again. And we're going to go over to the Surfaces tab. And we're going to press this button right off the bat because we already have this selected. So this is going to add the surface. And we're going to keep this all default because this is good the way it is. And then we want the top. We want the top of the surface. You can change this to be any of the depths, but we want we want the top. And we're going to add it as a break line. So this way um, it doesn't just go over the place. And we also, one thing we want to make sure we take care of is the boundaries. Um, so it doesn't just shoot all over the place. So we're going to right click and corridor extends as outer boundary. This is a very important step. So don't forget this. And we're going to press OK. Rebuild the corridor. And bam, we have surface so now now's the moment of truth and that is to see how the surface looks hopefully it's a smooth or relatively smooth surface and I actually clicked on the wrong thing I'm so sorry about that I need the surfaces so we're gonna uh, yeah that's the surface I don't want the corridor So I think it's looking pretty good. We're out of boundary here. That's why it's going down to zero. So we're going to check to see. And right right there, that's a perfect. Oh, boy. There we go. We just got to drag the, use the little, those little um, diamonds and pull those to mat meet that. But as you can see, it's a clear. There's no ripples, no weird things going on. This is how you make an intersection. I really hope this video helps you guys. Um, making intersections in Civil 3D is not an easy task, and they can be pretty daunting if you're just starting out. So I hope this video helps you guys, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like to see in Civil 3D. Thanks so much, and see you guys next time.